Hi, for this video, what I want to do is show you how to construct a 95% confidence interval in um, the TI Inspire graphing calculator. So let's look at the situation that we have. In a survey of 1,040 adults, approximately 46% of the respondents said the government should be able to access encrypted communication when investigating a crime. So with this, one of the reasons that I didn't state up here what type of confidence interval that we're going to use is you want to be able to look at the problem and figure out what information you have. Since we are dealing with a percentage of a sample, this needs to trigger that I'm going to use the one proportion Z interval. If you have two proportions, then you would use the two proportion Z interval. If it says the mean, then you would either use the Z interval or the T interval. So it's always important to know when to use each type of confidence interval. So in order to use this one, there is at least one condition that must be met for sure that you have to check. Um, depending upon your textbook, I have taught from several textbooks. There are different requirements for different textbooks, but this one is in all of them, is that n times p hat has to be greater than or equal to 5, and n times q hat also has to be greater than or equal to 5. So basically what this is saying is that my number of successes has to be more than 5 and my number of failures has to be more than 5. So with this, um, as far as finding q hat and p hat, p hat is the percentage of the sample that was surveyed. So it's your um, the proportion of your sample. So p hat is 0.46. We always put it as a decimal. And q hat is always 1 minus p hat. So with this, if I do 1 minus 0.46, we would get 0.54. It's always a good idea to show out your conditions that you did check this. So n would be the 1,040 times p hat of 0.46. This is our number of successes. This ends up giving us 478, which is greater than or equal to 5. And we would also check the other one, 1,040 times 0.54, which gives us 562 failures, which is also greater than or equal to 5. Okay, since our conditions are met, we're going to use, like I said, the one proportion Z interval is the name of this. And depending upon your book that you use, you may have a different formula. Um, the two that I'm the most familiar with is um, P hat minus the error and the population proportion is in between that. P represents the population proportion and P hat plus the error where E is equal to ZC times the square root of P hat Q hat over N. The other formula that um, I've also seen in another textbook, so this is option one that I know, there could be other ones out there because there's a lot of um, inconsistency in statistics textbooks. So the one that I use more often just because it's shorter is I use P hat plus or minus Z star, which is just another way of doing ZC. ZC just represents the Z score that corresponds to um, the critical value that's given. So the level of confidence, that's our um, critical value. Um, so Z star times P hat Q hat over N. So like I said, there's different notations and different print um, symbols that are used in different textbooks. Okay. Um, but with this, basically what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to use the Inspire to first find Z star in case you have to show work. So I'm going to use this formula here. And basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to take P hat, which is 0.46, plus or minus. The Z star comes from our critical value. So because of the fact um, that we're looking for a 95% confidence interval, we're going to use technology to help us find this. So in my calculator, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do um, inverse norm, half of 1 minus the level of confidence, and then the mean and the standard deviation are just going to be 0 and 1. So that's how I'm going to find Z star in my calculator. So I'm going to grab my calculator. And the first thing that I want to do is start a new document. 
and I'm just going to add a calculator screen. Now to get there, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to menu and I'm going to go to probability and I'm going to look for distribution. So that was menu, option five probability, and then option five distributions. And I'm going to choose option three, the inverse norm. And I'm going to type in 0.5, which is the same thing as one half times one minus 0.95. And then I'm just gonna hit enter on here and I get negative 1.95996. And for this one, we round to two decimal places. So we're gonna use negative 1.95. Okay, um, so in our calculator for this one, our ZC, and I'm not going to ignore the sign. And the reason for that is because if you remember, um, the 95% confidence is saying that 95% falls in between um, these two values. So basically what we're looking for is the interval in between where 95% of the area is in between. This right here would be our Z star and this right here would be our Z star. This one would be our negative one, which was the negative 1.95. This one would be our, sorry, 1.96. And this one would be our positive 1.96. So you can use either one of these, which is why we do both the plus or minus. So I'm just gonna plug in this one, the 1.96. And then my P hat is 0.46, my Q hat is 0.54, and N is my sample size, which is 1,040. Okay, so this is considered showing work for those of you that have to show work. Um, if you don't have to show work, then you could bypass a step and just get directly to the answer in your calculator. So in order to run this in our calculator, what I'm gonna do is again, I'm gonna go to my calculator. Um, this I just found because I needed to show work, so I wanted to show work. Um, and I'm gonna go to menu and I'm gonna go to statistics and I'm gonna choose option six, confidence intervals. It's important to know the name of your interval because if you notice, there's a lot that show up. And so we're gonna choose option five, the one proportion Z interval. For this, it asks us for X and N and our confidence level. X is your number of successes. Um, so with this, if you plug it in, like I could actually plug it into here as 0.46 times 1,040. Okay, and then N, and with this one, because it doesn't give me the exact answer, you know what, I'm gonna actually have to find that first. Um, we already found this. Um, I'm going to escape out of here. Let me go to cancel. Hold on. Okay. Um, so the 0.46 times 1,040, I forgot that in this calculator you can't show the work and it won't plug it in there. I get 478.4 and I can't have 0.4 of a person, so we just round it to the nearest whole number. So that was our number of successes that we found earlier and I had put it as a whole number because we were talking about people. I just didn't show you that I had actually multiplied it out and got a rounded answer, okay? So this is what our X value is. So in the calculator, when it asks for X, X is always P hat times um, the number in our sample. And you always have to round this to the nearest whole number. Okay, so you just use your traditional rounding rules on this to plug in for X. Okay, um, because most of the time, we round our percentages when we report them to the real world. Okay, so let me go back there. Menu, option six, statistics. Option six, confidence intervals. Um, option five, the one proportion Z interval. And then with this, what we're going to do is we're gonna plug in our X, which was our number of successes, um, which was 478. N was our sample size of 1,040. And C is our confidence level, which we were told was 0.95 or 95%. And so our C lower is 0.4293. Our C upper is 0.4899. So we would just round to however many places and basically we would report this as an interval. So I get 4.293 up to 0.4899. Okay, so when you're dealing with a confidence interval and 
it's important to be able to report this back, report your findings to the real world. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write this down and this is kind of the script that's expected in statistics. So you would say with your level of confidence, so in this case 95% confidence, and remember that we are talking about, um, we're trying to come up with an interval estimate for the entire population. So we already know that this percentage right here is in our interval because we used it to generate it. So we should never reference the sample interval when we're interpreting, okay? We always wanna talk about the entire population. So in this case, our population is adults. Um, so when we are writing this out, we would say with 95% confidence, the proportion, in this case, we're talking about a percentage or a proportion of adults and then our context is that they believe the government should be able to access encrypted communication during an investigation is between, and then you have the choice of how you wanna report this. Most of the time it's going to be reported as a percentage. Um, so we would say between 42.9% and 48.99%, okay? Um, so with this, what this is saying is that 95% of the confidence intervals we generate from our population are going to contain the true mean or the true proportion of the population. So in this case, um, we are 95% confident that this contains it. It is possible that we missed it. It's possible that we had a bad sample and that this completely misses our proportion of our population, but we're working with samples and we're trying to make an inference about the entire population, okay? So with 95% confidence, the proportion of adults who believe the government should be able to access Encrypted communication during an investigation is between 42.9% and 48.99%. As always, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please let me know. If there are additional topics you need me to cover, please let me know that as well.